here today with Lance Reeves, Operation Manor, Manager of Sierra Dairy. Lance, you want to tell us a little bit about your operation? Yeah, we've got a 60 cow rotary, uh, Rototech rotary. Uh, we're milking 3,500 head twice a day. Mostly we're milking a three-way cross, uh, Holstein, Jersey, and Swedish or Danish red. Uh, we've chosen those breeds for uh, more butter fat, higher components. Uh, most of our milk goes for either cheese or butter. Uh, we really like the rotor we, we've got. We like the, the continuity of it. It's the same every day. The cows, everything's really static for the cows. Um, we've, we've really had really good luck with it. Maintenance-wise, had no problems. It's been a really good choice for us. Tell me a little bit about the process that's going on here and how this rotary system works. Absolutely. You can see back at the back, one of the most interesting things that I've seen on the rotaries is, is how the cows really want to come on the rotary. It's just a very natural thing for them. Um, they'll almost push each other out of the way to walk onto the rotary. Uh, they really enjoy the ride. They'll come on. We've got five stations on the rotary. The first person will uh, prep the cow with a disinfectant solution get any excess milk, any of the, the dirty milk out of the teat first. As the cow comes around, the teats are cleaned with a, with a freshly washed cloth, and then the next station attaches the milker. The cow's being milked here as they come around all the way in front of us, and basically they'll finish somewhere three quarters to the end of the rotary. They'll go around the end, they'll get off, they'll go back out to their to their stalls where they'll have fresh feed, clean water troughs, and clean beds. How, how many cows can we hold on this rotary? It's a 60 cow, you know, 60 at one time. How long does it take to go around? About seven minutes from the time the cow gets on, so it goes all the way around. We're about seven and a half seconds for each cow to get on. Lance, I noticed when I pulled up you had three stall barns out here. Can you tell me a little bit about them? Absolutely. Uh, here in Central Texas, we've got a lot of a lot of heat, uh, a lot of humidity, a lot of rain sometimes of the year. Uh, the freestall barns really work well for us. Uh, they protect the cow, they keep them comfortable, they keep them very clean. Um, it really fits into our climate here. Okay, well how about we go take a look at them? Sounds great. All right. Lance, we're here in the freestall barn. Why don't you tell me a little bit about this barn and what's going on. Sure. Um, this is called a freestall barn because rather than what the old conventional barns were, these cows are free to roam. Uh, they can lay any bed they want to lay in. Uh, they can come eat anytime and as much as they want to eat. They can drink when they want to drink. They can socialize in any way they want to socialize. It's just a lot more freedom. Notice that you've got sand here. Uh, explain to me a little bit about that process and how you bring it in and, and what happens to it and, and that living. We, we, we prefer sand. We think it's the, the cleanest uh, bedding that, that, that can be. We think it's probably the most natural. Um, we have sand locally so we're able to bring it in. We uh, actually recycle about 75 to 80 percent of our sand. We recapture it and bring it back in. Um, as the cows leave their pen twice a day to go to the barn to be milked, we have a crew that comes in, uh, completely cleans the beds, re-manicures them, re-slopes them so they're comfortable, clean, and cool when the cows come back. Um, just try and keep it just as clean and just as pristine as we can. You talked about recycling and, and utilizing that sand. What happens to that? Is it kicked out of the beds? and? into the alleyway and here where we see the manure in the alleyways, what, what's the process to uh, managing and handling that? Absolutely. Um, six times a day, we flush the lanes. It's all automated, it's on timers. Uh, any sand that's been kicked out, any manure in the lanes where the cows will be walking uh, is flushed down to our uh, collection system. And we just, like I said, we just try and keep it as clean and as comfortable for the cows as we can. Sounds good. Why don't we walk down there and take a look at that collection system Sounds you're talking great. about. Lance, we just left the freestall barn and saw the flush system go off and 
uh, end up here at the, the waste management system. Why don't you tell me a little bit about what's going on here, how this uh, system works? Sure. Well, all of the flush water from all of our barns comes down to this place. Um, it dumps into this sand channel, which gets really flat, really wide, and it slows the flow of the water down. All the sand, or as much as possible, drops out at this point. The water and the manure come on around through a series of gates. We divert it into whichever of the settling basins we want to go to. Now we're going into our two southernmost basins. We generally get 120 days of storage out of two basins. So it'll go in there. Uh, there are one inch slats in the walls, all three sides, to allow the water to drain and separate from the manure. Uh, the water that comes out comes down to a pumping station, is picked up, it's taken back up to our secondary basins. It's basically the same premise, just a little smaller, and we have half inch mesh on the walls to get a more filtration basically, okay. just to get more of the solids out of the water. Uh, the water then comes to another basin and is pumped back to the tanks to begin the flush again. Okay. Well, and a little bit about the sand settling basin in the freestall barns, you mentioned that and talked about recycling the sand. Tell me a little bit about how y'all recycle that sand and, and clean it and reuse it. Absolutely. Daily we come down with a, a front end loader and we push the sand up into a pile on the concrete pad where it's allowed to dry for 24 hours. After that, we take it and we spread it out under one of our drying pads, which we've got a large drying pad there, we've got a large drying pad here, and another behind us over there. Uh, we work that sand for usually, depends on the weather, anywhere from three to five days, uh, spreading it out, raking it, and just working it over and over and trying to get it really dried and really exposed to the sun and just any, anything killed that's in the sand, just really dry and get it clean again. And then we pile it up, and we let it sit for 60 days, and we put it back in the barns. Okay. Well, up here, uh, when we looked at the secondary system up here <laughs> on the hill, um, they're cleaning it out right now. And tell me a little bit about how the system's put together where you can get in and clean it out and, and uh, what happens to the material after you do that. All the basins have removable walls. Uh, you just go under the loader and take out two or three walls. The loaders and the trucks just go right in. Um, <clears throat> these basins actually have a floor drain, which is, the, which is the slats laid down, a layer of gravel underneath, and a layer of fine sand on top. But the loaders and the trucks can drive in. They, lo <clears throat> they load up the manure, um, they truck it straight to the fields where it's land applied to some of our crops that are eventually cut and brought back to feed the cows. Okay. Well, Lance, I appreciate the tour today. Thanks and, very much. Uh, thanks for your time. Okay. Thank you.